Right, if you want Jarvan, we'll take Silas. If you want Silas, we'll take Jarvan. But obviously, the next question is, what does G2 have prepared to deal with this Silas pit? You ask the question, nobody knows. Well, I don't have the answer. Oh, but look at this answer immediately from G2. The Galio has been let through. So now immediately G2 has drafted not only a strong early game, but they're setting up for a strong 2v2 towards the bot side of the map. And red side Jarvan does this because you can take Jarvan X and engage support, something like the Galio, and create a game state that will always persist, whatever the lane assignment. And it doesn't even say you have to team fight. So that's what Jarvan, in lieu of Silas, has provided. We're going to get a very, very standard jungle matchup overall. But the tankiness advantage should be on G2. And SK2 do what they often do, which is rather than go for the Nautilus or Morgana, they default to the Braum. The disengaged support, the one that matches up very well into many opposition. They can pair it up with the Lucian as well, so I wouldn't be surprised to see G2 take that one off the board, and it's the first ban immediately. The nameplate's on as well. Remember that a lot of Mata's struggles at this tournament were on Nautilus. Had a very unconvincing game on this pick. You're going to an ultra comfort for him. Wherever he went around the world, he would default to Braum and comfort in this 1-1 stalemate scenario can hold a lot of water. And now we need to find out in the one-on-ones, what will these solo laners be running? G2 Esports still holding all of their cards. They've seen Silas on the table and Irelia is now banned. Lucian Ezreal taken off the table along with that Callista. Teddy's going to be digging a little bit deeper down this pool. Yes. Yesterday we saw the Siva coming out from double lift. I'm wondering what options SKT want to run. And I love the bans because you're banning two champions that can fight earlier and you're saying take the Siva. Late game's wonderful, but it was the late game that never came in game number two. And I don't think that SKT can afford to take in for your early game tools. And speaking of late game, the Vladimir is a bit of both. So let's just notice the difference between game one and game three now for G2. They were hesitant to lock in the uh, Sona Tarek, whereas this time around, their drafts and picks are immediate. They've locked in the Galio Jarvan. They knew the Kaiser immediate lock-in of the Vladimir. This is the prep that G2 came in with day one. And as you said, Papa Smith, it looks like they're just sticking to it. On the side of SKT, after blind pick, it's gonna be Kennen and the obvious Silas first pick here, but AD carry pick here is interesting. If you pick Varus, you're gonna get team fought Wombo to death. The Vayne is what they yeah. hovered and would have more tools to self-peel. The Varus would be super early game and you'd have to ride the storm through from the early laning phase. So the risk of running a Varus is that he doesn't have those mobility tools or escapes. So against a heavy dive comp like Vladimir, Kaiser, Jarvan, Galio. All the champions <laughs> locked in. <laughs> uh, it can be very challenging and Wow, we're actually going to get to see Caps' Azir going up against Faker. This is exciting. Oh, but I'm nervous because win lane, win game has helped define this series. And there's some scary solo laners here if G2 fall behind. But the Azir can win lane in the 1v1. It's not like there was a struggle in the 1v1 versus yeah. the LeBlanc. It was the roam potential. And now the onus on Faker, someone who at his best could still be considered someone who wants to look for individual lane advantages rather than spread leads like Caps, who is kind of cavalier and leaving at level three. Baker might have to change his innate identity to make this work. Well, G2 Esports creative, explosive, inventive team. Caps has debuted his first ever Morgana and now his first Azir of the year. And it's against SK Telecom. Now, I'm really excited for this matchup because in the top lane, I feel like SKT should have priority early. Cannon does very well into the Vladimir. In the mid lane, I feel like the Azir doesn't actually have that much wave clear. So Faker should also be able to gain decent priority when you combine his Q with his passive. The bot lane is the one I have question marks around about who gains priority early, when are the big spikes. But the fact that SKT actually have two pushing solo lanes means that Klid should have access to the enemy jungle early. And that's been one of the defining features in allowing SKT to get ahead throughout this tournament. And I'm a big fan of the Varus form. I think they'll be fine outside of shenanigans level one. I think SKT need to be just decisive and inventive about their level one in game number one against Sonatarik as they are here. They have a lot of on paper advantages, but three flashes blown at level one and suddenly the paper's ripped up and it's all up in the air. And of course, game one, those level one kills really going in favor of SKT and helping them accelerate their lead. We saw a little bit of play from G2 toying with some level ones as the game has, uh, as the series has unfolded. So I want to track their decision making and also then take a closer look at some of these keystones and decision making here. Uh, as it stands, SK Telecom leaving the base, 
and I'll see what G2 got. Gotta give a quick shout out to my boy Ender back in Europe. The Hail of Blades on the Rek side, it is the preferred rune choice for him because of how much extra early game power that it does give very quickly to proc that triple Q and then into the true damage bite means that you have a lot of early skirmishing power. And I want you to draw your attention to Caps, who has gone teleport to try to follow any potential roam timings from Faker. That means it's in lieu of a summoner spell, usually a defensive one like a barrier or a cleanse. He doesn't have that and Clid would love to combo into the mid lane if possible. Now you talked about level ones, Papa Smithy. What we're seeing from SKT is gaining early vision towards the bot side of the map. They want to get information on where the Javan is starting and what this Rek'Sai can do with the priority that he should gain early. But given that there is no uh, vision on the top side, right now, SKT have no information as to where Yankos is. Well, you just mentioned Clid, Vedius, and I want to take a look at some of his stats from the group stage. This does not include the two previous games. Um, second highest jungle proximity, second highest kills plus assists, kill participation nearly 90%, and it's, it's an fantastic performance. Game one, that's what it felt like Clid was doing, but his buy left something to be desired. Again, it's worth knowing that in game number two, he had less to work with when it came to actually impacting lanes, and the champion was a lot more situational of a ganker. This is where the Clid from MSI 2019 should rear its ugly head if you're a G2 fan, and there are many lanes you could try to hit to potentially get them snowball. And given that we're talking about junglers, I want to draw attention to the minimap. As you'll see, Yankos actually started on his red buff, passed all the way around behind potential vision, which means that he will not be spotted until now as he makes his way towards the Scuttle Crab, but the Rek'Sai will not be there in time as Clid has chosen to do cross. It's likely to launch Clid to the top side to get a three cam clear or could just go for the Raptors and have the level three there as well. Wait and see where Clid's first point of ingress is. There should be information available to SKT. There's still level one and Yankos was last seen bot lane. All right, Taunt on Tomata means Perks gets a lot of damage. Man, that Plasma passive does so much. Red buff, Flag and Drag is available to Yankos, but he doesn't have level three. Flash and heal still up for Mata, and he's not gonna get dove yet. And if you remember back to the Talia Pantheon games in the final, we hold that point for mid lane. All right, take a look. There's the Flash on Burrow. Caps throws his Flash oh. down. Not gonna get caught out. And he's able to escape with his life, but Mickey may charge the taunt in the bottom lane. I'm holding my breath. That would have been first blood if they were able to get in there because of no defensive summoner. Mickey's just gonna walk up. But Mata has gone Guardian heal just in case his lane is camped, like he did against Talia Pantheon. Super defensive setup here as they have Cleanse, Heal, and Guardian across the two champions. So what we're actually seeing is that in this early game, it is the duo of Perks and Mickey that got that early priority. They didn't leash for their jungler, whereas Teddy and Mata did, which means they got that early level two, and that's why they have so much control. The problem is with Yankos is that because he went for a level two gank, Clid has been able to steal away the Raptors, which you can see now, only one left, and he's gonna steal away the Krogs. So Clid using this early game to deny the Jarvan as much as possible and potentially set up a dive in top lane. Oh, not potentially. There is a dive. Faker's actually teleported in. There is the Sanguine Pool. Wonders buying some time. Flash is available to him. Yankos may arrive, but it may be too late. First blood is secured by Clint. Now Yankos gets a reply back onto Faker. He's got himself double buffs. Needs to get the cooldowns back if he wants to chase, but instead will just tax the lane. Now we're down in the bottom lane. That's a taunt onto Botetti and Mata. Cleanse has already been used and Perks is running for his life. Summoner heals available on both sides. and. Ignite was not used by Mickey. SKT, first blood. And we get some insights into the setups. The double defensive summoners from Mata tell you they're not going to play bot side. They're focusing top and mid. The TP advantage gets them a trade kill, but only a trade. And as we said in draft, Caps and Faker have agreed to play on the side lanes. Here comes Caps and cleared. Yankos is coming to save the day. Looking for the Prey Seeker. Come on, like shooting fish in a barrel. Dun, 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 dun. I'm waiting for the spell. There's the unburrow, and Clint manages to do it. Gets the uh, damage down, sinks in the fangs onto Yankos as well. Here comes Faker as well with the follow-up stun. It's a double. Clint is back. It had to be. Clint continues to brawl, understands that Rek'Sai has the damage advantage early game. And yes, Cinderhawk Jarvan come in and be a bigger frontliner, but Clint's already 3-0. He's doing exactly what everyone asked for. Clint could not have played that better and finds SKT some very important early game. Game kills. We talked about how having prior with these solo laners is going to be important for Clid. He's utilized this early game beautifully. He's now level five on the Rek'Sai, three, zero, and zero. He is looking insanely strong. This is scary. If you're on G2 Esports, they're almost down 2,000 gold. And yes, while a large amount of that is obviously 
in Clid's pockets. He has yet to shop, still sitting on the machete, still clearing, and he's significantly further ahead than Yankov. And now in a meta with less vision as the years have rolled on, the vision of the game has been less, so your jungler's power often becomes like having a mobile control ward. It's has his back stopped there. Because now, wherever Clid goes, how are you going to deal with his entire warrior enchant on first back? Suddenly, that's the same as having ward control because everyone's scared of the Rexa. And what I loved about the play uh, that he actually made in mid was the fact that he interrupted the glide from Captain E. And because he had no flash, the best that he could do was hope that Yankos could body block. But Clid, with his extremely long cooldown on the E, was just like, well, I'm just waiting for this to come back up. And the moment it was, he turns it into a double. Kill. And the double kill was when Clid had no flash himself and was able to keep up the chase and extend for that kill. So did everything right, and now he is the big unknown that G2 is trying to find tabs on. Oh, level six now for Clid. Six minutes He's into a big the deal. game. Two levels ahead of Yankos for the time being. He's going to use the Blast Cone to hop over the Dragon Wall. Now find himself running into Yankos, who just dinged five. And Clid manages to connect with the Unburrow, and Yankos is at least on the right side of the map to prevent any you know, follow-up, you can see Teddy and Mata shoving the wave all the way into the tower. They are level five, respectively, and the same is true for Khan. So all three of SKT's lanes right now pushing into G2's territory. If you're wondering, Clit is 500 gold ahead of anyone on the Rift. Second place, the Cannon on the side of SKT. And it, that's resulting in a 2,000 gold lead in this early game for SKT right now. We've already talked so much in this series about the team that gets the early lead seems to just run away with the game. And based on how things are going, it's looking good for SKT. But the thing we have to remind our viewers is the scaling on G2. Vladimir, Azia, Kaiser. Three items, or arguably even two. This team composition in a 5v5 situation is exceptionally strong. I completely echo your point. In the late game, if they run each other 5v5, SKT required to significantly outplay to even salvage a team fight. So if that clock reads 30, G2 will be sitting pretty. Well, let's see if they can get there, though, because that gold lead continues to grow. 2,200. Yankos, no flash available. Flag and drags to safety over the Rift Herald wall. And while that's going on, he's spotted. Clid is now making his way down to the bottom lane. Now the irony, ooh, Clid, actually, I don't have time to talk because he's looking for a play. There's no Varus anywhere near, no teleport, teleport either. Teleport is available for Khan. Mickey's gonna walk in, get knocked up into the end. Oh. Look at that! The Queen's Wrath obliterating Mickey! <laughs> Yep, I held my breath, manages to escape. The Q was on cooldown. Two seconds, the difference between a casual, and I repeat, casual double kill, or one person getting out there. Clid is just insanely strong. Halo Blades, Warrior Rek'Sai, level six. Really, really strong. Uh, if you didn't need further proof, that right there was exactly <laughs> it. It was like a jump scare from a movie. Yeah. Mickey was like, I wonder if I could ward this. Instantly dead. Yeah, so he's a level 6 Galio. He also has the damage reduction from his W. Don't even know if he gets to use it, because he hits him with the Prey Seeker. Q, E. So he used the single Q on top of the Prey Seeker, on top of the E on a second Q and a Smite. Yeah. You That's... could write songs about this website. <laughs> it's that powerful. And it's going to be up to G2 to somehow control this man. It feels like SK Telecom have, to a degree, lived and died by Clid's success. And when he's able to unlock the rest of the team, they then bring him to the finish line. Feels like he's overdue for a bad game because he's either been amazing <laughs> or actually pretty competitive in losses. So. Yeah. Right now, at least, Clid continues to patrol double Infernal spawns for the early spiking team. Does sit well for SKT. And notice how initially Perks and Mickey had some priority in this lane, but now they're like, we can't go anywhere because we know we lose every three versus three. But you've got to keep an eye on that ward that's sitting right behind the lane right now. There is a the potential for a flank from the side of G2. All right, Teleport is just about available for Wonder. The Engage is coming in. That's already won, thanks to Chains of Corruption. Mickey's able to escape for a few seconds longer. Gets unburrowed and knocked up. Now Fake is down to 200 hit points. Wonder's Teleport still not available. Here comes Caps, he's caught by Clint. Void Rush has already been used. The Emperor's Divide goes out, and that's a dead cap. You can't get away from it. The Cataclysm and comes down at least a reply back and crucially it's a shut down gold secured now wonder not going to be able to tp he is running for his life already used the flash and the w and khan is able to win the fight now they re-engage this time from faker under the tower perks is trying to get the damage out as yanko stays alive the tower helping out faker goes down here comes khan no slicing maelstrom the target for now is mata the turn the burn mickey comes in with the interrupt and perks gets himself a kill three for yankos one for perks 
What started off as a beautiful dive from the side of SKT ends up being countered by a drawn out fight that G2 are able to buy time for. And it's Yankos that ends up picking so many of the kills up, buys enough time for the team. And I don't even know who came out on top of that. I think overall G2 will love the spot they found themselves in. Remember, they've got the scaling and a lot of immediate gold injections are shut down from cleared is passed over to the enemy. And overall, it just feels like SKT were trying to play completely from the G2 playbook. But by the end, you could see where perhaps G2 had a bit more confidence. Wow, crazy stuff. But Clid still sitting at 5-1-1 one, and one on this rec side. Still exceptionally strong and someone that G2 have to respect. But they have their eyes on him right now. And notice that the Azir is sitting in mid lane, could potentially roam down, but G2, they're going to disengage. They don't want to look for a fight or priority around the river as the dragon spawns in a minute. No teleports on either top laner. As it stands, completed Blade of the Ruin King for Teddy into thrift shopping for Perks, and Perks is down 20 CS in that lane. So the next Infernal Drake in 40 seconds could be a big one for SKT. And I'd like to draw the viewers' attention to something that also fits into our uh, chatter about it being early game versus late game here in terms of identity. There's no Gunblade on cannon. Usually Gunblade against Vladimir allows your staying power in the lane to increase because you can stain through with harass. This time it's the proto belt, it's team fight initiation. It's getting the game done around Baron spawning a clock. And on top of that, the, the converse, or the inverse rather, is that Caps is actually running the lethal tempo and it's going very much towards the high attack speed as Zia Bill, which is very much geared towards the two, three items in the late game. He gets those three soldiers up and he does an insane amount of damage. It is still a two and a half thousand gold deficit for G2 Esports and Yankos is gonna try to even something out. Yep, fake and no flash. Cataclysm is up for Yankos, but with the, sum the uh, Rift Herald being summoned in the top lane, uh, Khan will be able to deck a bunch of these turrets. Actually, will just take the whole tower, and Khan will accelerate his lead even further. Zonius will be coming in early, but G2 actually leashed this in first down to 2,000. All right, Emperor's Divide stolen away by Faker. The Dragon is going to go low. Secured this time by G2 Esports. Chain of Corruption starts to spread. SKT will easily pick up a kill onto Mickey and Yankos. But it is, of course, at the cost of the Dragon. Add in the tower gold, SKT I think will be happy with that. SKT pretty much get everything that they could want because they can likely convert this into more tower plates in the mid lane. Caps runs the risk of getting dived. While he does still have the ultimate, he has to be careful. He does indeed. No flash available to him. Uses the conquering and shifting sands to escape. While that's happening, Teddy and Mata are pushing the bottom lane. They're taking even more plates down there. And it's SKT early game, 5,000 gold. And this is going to be a teleport here from Caps just to try defend. Remember, still no flash, and every time I see Clint step forward, I'm just like, he's going to kill someone. It's just such a fascinating game state, Vedius and Quickshot, because the Infernal plays into how strong this game will eventually get from a team composition point for the side of G2 Esports. But the immediate mold of the plates gives SKT more agency now. So the Infernal really only doubles down on what G2 will have as an inevitability. So SKT just continue to keep up the same game plan and G2 still pretty happy about an Infernal. And you can understand that G2 decided to go for the Infernal because they noticed that, hey, Rek'Sai's top, he's using the Rift Herald, but because of how quickly he took it and because of how slow G2 were to react, it was very easy for SKT to actually force that fight get the collapse, and even without Khan, they were confident that they could win out in that exchange. Are we in a situation where the gold lead is substantial enough to believe that this is SKT's game? Or, and the question is, if, you know, where, where are the comeback opportunities? Obviously, defend and team fight, right, for G2. But there's gotta be that break point where the lead is just too insurmountable. I think we're on the precipice, but I yeah. think SKT have definitely hit their early timings running, so I think SKT are happy about their position, but they have to reevaluate on kind of a 30 second cadence. Every 30 seconds, have we done enough to move our agenda up more and more? Whereas G2 are not in completely a hole. They are with some kills, they are with an Infernal, and they are able to stick it. So we don't know the answer just yet, but I think SKT overall, I wonder on Varus' next time, do you go Rage Blade to maximize your damage, or do you go a more Malmordius to frontline I feel like there's advantages and disadvantages to both decisions. 
Yeah, item break points are kind of what I'm looking for uh, with response to Papa Smithy, because like, as he rightly says, I think that G2 are at a point where even though they're at a deficit, once they hit like three items specifically, that's when I feel they can actually look for fights. But SKT have such a massive lead, they have so much freedom and control to force these fights. And the question honestly becomes, will G2 actually be baited into going for these exchanges? Oh, flash for flash, Caps look for the Emperor's Divide. Faker responded and he's stolen away the Hema Plague. And just as a final thought, this tournament, more than any in history, scaling has been a dirty word. The scaling comp usually doesn't work, in spite of what the paper might suggest. Well, let's find out. Flashboard from Wonder. He's going to use the Vlad passive and throw down the W. Can Khan cannot escape, and that's an easy kill there for Wonder. But he expended everything he had. So break points is exactly what we were talking about. And for Vladimir, level 11 with the proto belt completed, we can now see that in that 1v1 matchup, things are starting to go in favor of Wonder. And as the game progresses, it's going to keep shifting. Oh, perks is already blown up. Clid just uses that Queen's Wrath to perfection. Now Caps, Emperor's Divide is still on cooldown. Mickey forced to flash over the wall. Justice punch to safety. Uses the stopwatch to avoid the Void Rush. Not going to go down yet until Teddy finally cleans him up. Now Yankos, he uses the stopwatch. Emo Plague thrown down. Remember, Faker stole that earlier. And he's going to escape with his life. Yes, Wonder got the kill, but it's Perks and Mickey that got dunked in their own jungle. And it's Clid that is the player that we keep watching to help SKT maintain this lead. 7, 1, and 3. 100% kill participation so far for the SKT jungler. This guy has been on a tear in the early game, has the Black Cleaver completed, and as long as he is still on the Rift, G2 are going to struggle to find ways back into this game. And you can see that he's handedly ahead of everyone else in the Rift. Remember, he doesn't trade in lane and get damage numbers. This is purely from his gank timings. Very rare a jungler has the most damage done by this margin. Well, when you've got seven out of the team's ten kills, I think that will skew it just a little. But yes, the point still stands. Very rare for a player at this caliber, at this level, to have this uh, you know, amount of impact. And now with the Black Cleaver to back it up, I mean, just look how quickly Perks dies. So Perks has no vision on this side of the map. He gets spotted out because of Clid's Tremacent, <laughs> and he immediately gets blown up, and it costs Mickey his life as well. So honestly, that was just greedy pathing from Perks, face checking an area of the map that they really shouldn't have. And then the problems spill over to the other members. He gets away, has Starwatch, but unfortunately, the cavalry are there. So definitely, it was the dominoes falling, but they were set up by Perks's kind of lazy exit from the base. And for me, one of the Wait, wait, Slicing Maelstrom just come up. Wonder will get stunned. We'll get a big chunk of heal from the Hemo Plague and bring it back to 50%. And with these items, remember, no Gunblade Proto Belt. It's a cannon built for team fighting. It goes back to the old analysis of Vladimir outscaling cannon in the 1v1. And that's the best new story for the side of G2. Now, the Morello Nomicon has been completed on Khan, so having that healing reduction will definitely be a little bit more valuable in the one versus one. But the, with regards to the rest of the map, SKT is still maintaining control. And we can see Yanko's getting pushed further and further out of his jungle as Clid pushes this vision line up even more. All right, first tower secured by G2 Esports in the top lane at the cost of the mid lane and the Infernal. That's two Infernals for SK Telecom. 6,000 gold lead uh, in, for the time being. And we're still waiting to see how and where G2 Esports can start to claw this game back. Obviously, scaling and time is what they need. They're going to be very careful on how many objectives they concede. So what I find particularly funny is the fact that Wonder is... He had two levels, he now only has one. But he's pretty far ahead in terms of experience. He's ahead in farm, yet he's still down in gold. Thanks to all of the turret plates that Khan picked up early on into the game. And this is something you were talking about, Papa Smithy, where uh, even though G2 have this scaling aspect, the amount of like overall gold they lost from all the plates that were handed over is kind of cresting this period in time where G2 is slowly getting stronger, but it maintains SKT's lead. Obviously, if you don't have the context of what year this game is played in, as Wanda backs off, it feels like the scaling comp is going to get there eventually, right? It just feels inevitable if you've been around for five years of watching League. But games end very decisively and quickly. Game states where no Baron is down leads to game over two minutes later. And that's why the scaling comps that come online in 30, our average game time is less than 30 for a lot of these particular parts of this tournament. Yeah, let's see what happens if G2 can find any options here. Mata was trying to get some wards into G2 jungle. Yankos steps all the way forward and unable to find anything just yet. But one of the benefits that will come up is that Sharima's Legacy Sundisk, the tower that Caps can bring up, will allow them some additional time to stall this game out. It's 20 minutes in, but Caps is dead. He's going to get caught up. No, he escapes the eventuality. Uh, Clid's Void Rush, I didn't see that one starting. 
And he does end up picking up kill number eight. And Caps isolated once again. Clid finds the pick. His hunt was successful as one of the big wave clear tools has now been taken. SKT pushing in two waves and they are utilizing this early gold lead beautifully. Caps positioning like he's an assassin, but getting assassinated by the jungle Rek'Sai. And it just has that flow on effect. Curse can keep pushing, but in two lanes, more difficult objectives than were already taking it down. These are very long lanes in mid and bot, and you have to feel like Baron just recently spawned is on the agenda. Caps giveth and Caps taketh as we've seen throughout this game, and just getting collapsed on, feeling comfortable. There's a few G2 members around, but it's simply not enough. He knows there's no lane ward behind him, but he has no red side control. And if you're maybe hanging around close to your blue buff, perhaps fine, but just too bold down the mid lane. Like you say, Trevor, taking down where he stands. All right, Wonder now going to get jumped on by Khan, who's got a needlessly large rod and that stopwatch. Look at all the control wards, nine members of the game sitting on them. Wonder got himself two needlessly large rods as well as the Phoenix Codex and Amp Tome. So we're getting close to two items here for G2, but they are still 7,000 gold down. So, you know, that three, four item spike might be what they need to come back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you're unaware of SKT's next objective, just have a look at their inventory and you will notice a lot of control wards. This is typically what you invest in when you have your eyes on the Baron. You want to invest a lot of vision, denying initially all of G2's wards. And when they come to contest, you then go back to the Baron and you clear them out once again, forcing G2 to either reset or face check into fog of war. And because of how strong they are, SKT want to fight. SKT want to force G2 to come to their turn. And SKT definitely have the walk-up advantage on the red side jungle where they need that deep vision to get Baron. However, the biggest flow-on effect of this Baron dance, if they can draw Wonders teleport, it gives Cannon a lot of time to split push. So even if all you get is the Vladimir's TP, we've already seen Vlad winning trades 1v1. That's already an objective because then it suddenly amps pressure on the bot lane inhibitor as that's a pretty sweet hat that Wonder has in his inventory. Rebidon's death cap picked up to back up uh, the proto belt. They're just going to use that blast cone to get to safety. And if SKT had taken just one or two more steps forward, you have to feel G2 would have pulled the trigger. They are in full defensive mode. Wonder's going to be collapsed on. Look at the vision here. One uh, member of SKT is spotted, and I think Wonder hasn't yet backed away. He actually threw down the Chemo Plague. Now going to teleport. This is the call for Baron. G2 Esports are going to try and force this one away. Chemo Plague stolen away by Faker. And look, SKT, they got the TP at no real cost. Exactly. Clid and Faker have too much threat with just the Hemo Plague and Clid having so many offensive tools. Perks is recalling. Kind of a lazy spot, but won't be caught. And this is crucial for SKT because they didn't even have to do much to get the teleport out from Wonder. He was like, well, if I die here, then there's SKT is going to force the Baron. Whereas if I don't TP here and threaten the Baron myself, then this is like the best case scenario where maybe I can get Khan's TP or maybe we can get a 4v5. But in the end, you now have Cap sitting on a side lane. He's going to have to rely on him TPing into a fight. And with an Azir, you never really want him to be the one that's flanking on the enemy team. Exactly. You want to get your soldiers up. You want to have a locus of control and bring people to you and setting up around Baron. Perfect spot for that. TPing late, much more awkward for the Azir. Well, two item spikes, by the way. Morella Nomicon for Caps. Rage Blade finally for Perks. The question that you asked for Teddy, Rageblade and no Hex Drinker. Proto Belt, Luden's Echo for Faker, so they're using their 7,500 gold lead to their advantage. They've just picked up their third dragon of the game. It was a Cloud. It's going to help them positioning around this Baron. The next one's Cloud as well. And it's just, it's all SKT all day. And as long as they play this Baron fight well, they have all the tools they need to win the game. And I love that you point out the Hex Drinker timings, because in a different game where there wasn't so much gold loaded onto the Barris, that's the item that would have been passed up to get your two item spike. They wouldn't have had the ability to walk up. Speaking of walking up, Mickey is, of course, very squishy. He is indeed. Hemo is going to do a lot. Mickey finally forced to flash. Justice punch to safety. Fake is not going to be able to connect. And while Mickey escapes with his life, it was at the cost of his flash. And this is an awkward spot. Look at G2's inventories. Only control wards on their bot lane. And they need to start contesting the vision here. A lot of people need a back timing to get that vision up. And actually, Wander's full up on items. So contesting this red side jungle and thus the Highway to Baron is hard for G2. SKT playing this map beautifully right now. Notice how they've got priority in the bot side of the map, forcing the Azir to come clear it. They cleared out mid, moved in towards the top side, and now they've just secured a very easy top lane tower. Very playbook, very standard, good control setup to uh, result in G2 not having any answer. 
And let's see what SKT do now. Waiting in the bush, G2 are somewhat split. This is the collapse that maybe SKT need. Faker stepping all the way forward, the rest of the squad not with him, but G2 unawares. They've got no vision, remember? They didn't know that they could have potentially collapsed. Now, SKT back away, and if you keep looking at the minimap, a lot of vision set up for the LCK representative. Split decision making coming out from Caps right now. He keeps moving up and down the river, not entirely sure what he should be doing. Either push the bot tower, maybe secure another objective to get a bit of gold into the back pockets of G2, or grouping up with his team to defend against the Baron. This indecision is causing a kind of stalemate between G2, but they don't really know what their next step should be. All right, Faker's gonna try dash away. He's actually got the Kai'Sa ultimate which once again could help finishing things off. Instead, Wanda just throws down the W, escapes with his life, and now Mickey, remember, flashless. Oh, so, so close, dancing with death. Yankos is now gonna be the next target. SKT are just fishing. They've got their fishing rods out, they're looking for targets, and they finally found themselves a G2 Esports member. Faker takes down Yankos. It felt inevitable with the amount of control they had. And that inevitability is not a Yankos mistake, but someone has to be there to check the Baron. He has the flag to throw over the wall. They had no time to back him by control wards. Someone's got a face check, and here comes Clint. Oh, man, there we go. Mickey cannot flash away from this one. Caps has thrown up at least one soldier. If SKT stick in the, the choke point, maybe. Here comes Caps, goes for the slide and the glide, holding on to his ultimate. Faker takes a couple of autos to the face, but Perks loses his flash in the process, and SKT back away. Marta actually gets both carry flashes for his own flash glacial fissure, so that's definitely the single value for him. The Baron start still hasn't happened. They're still worried about the Wombo that can take them out from the Baron debuff if they actually try to force the objective. So even with a two-level lead in Smite, and with how damn strong Clit is, it's still about the picks in transition and not about rushing down the barrel. Insanely respectful play from SK Telecom, and it suits their style. Methodical to the playbook. Textbook. They've just gone back, spent the gold that they've accrued. More of Malmortius now completed for Teddy. But fortunately for G2, the Baron vision has been cleared out. Yes, you conceded a few kills, but crucially, Baron not yet secured. And Wonders teleport is nearly available. Level 16 is kind of what you're looking at if you're a G2 fan right now. Unfortunately, the front line of Yankos is very squishy, and Mickey currently sitting at 0 and 5 means that should the fight start, it's going to be very easy for SKT to melt through this front line. So a lot of the focus will now be drawn onto Wonder, one of the big carries of this team that has helped carry them through uh, the regular season of the LEC. Very close to that level 16 mark, has the Void Staff completed, and on this flag, he's only going to get stronger. They're going to need the double Void stuff, just look at this. It's double completed more, and of course, the overshield from the Brahm as well on the locket of the Iron Solari. So, given all of that, the Void Star need stuff is needed, so it does change those timers once again. All right, once again, SK Telecom setting up vision, making as much darkness as possible. So, G2 Esports have to commit themselves to the most unsafe ways. The Observer is really helping to highlight. The problems that G2 are facing as now the Baron has been started, but look at SKT's commitment. They've only got a few members. Yeah, they've started that one off with Clint. He's not that strong uh, in terms of tanking the Baron, but they put Yankos out. All right, the flag and drag, I think, got interrupted. There's the slicing maelstrom on the back line. Khan's already killed Caps. That's one of the biggest DPS members. Wonder tries to step forward, gets a transfusion, and backs away. Now, the only option here for G2 maybe is a Baron pit play, but it's so risky. Khan with a beautiful ultimate splits up G2, and now SKT looking for more. All right, Yankos is going to get caught up. Wonder steps all the way forward. He will play gets so many members. He manages to get the pop from the E. Now he's turning around. Transfusion's up. Perks takes down Faker. Wonder protobelt forward. That's another reply. But look, the CC and the damage. Again, G2 Esports, they lose the fight, but they've stopped the Baron for now. But with Teddy being at full health, they may be able to just make their way back towards it. Khan can just tank up. Got him! Perks gets taken out by Sniper Teddy, and now SKT make their way towards the Baron. And that means the guaranteed Baron here, you'd have to think. Now Caps has TP. Wonder in 30 seconds, do they go for a last second contest? 12,000 gold advantage for SKT. Baron is going low. Caps has teleport and ultimate available, but there's no real target to him to get there in time. SK Telecom secure the Baron. They secure the kills, and they might be securing their second win of the series. And it's just such a beautiful setup by SKT around the Baron. It's a multi-pronged setup. It involves enemy vision and exhausting it. 
sort of thing you could watch as a tutorial because the amount of picks over the course of the four to five minutes we watched the Baron dance just injected more gold to keep forward those times where in competitive fights they have just enough magic resist to take standing fights as they come. And it's a beautiful demonstration as well as how to not let a team scale, right? Like, you notice that G2 are constantly forced into making decisions. They're constantly forced into situations where they have to come to SKT, and that's when SKT can utilize the gold lead that they've built up. And now it's even bigger. 12,000 and a half is the advantage that SKT have over G2. And yes, you can look at scaling, you can talk about, oh, they still have the late game, but the item advantages that SKT have should compensate for that difference. Honestly, when I'm on the LCK broadcast, I say the S word, the dirty word is scaling because scaling just hasn't had a reliable place in the 2019 meta and SKT know more than most how much that can be punished. Yeah, that's exactly what SKT are doing. Um, they've got such a fantastic position. Four dragons at 30 minutes, gigantic lead. And for G2 Esports, again, a few small mistakes here and there and just some very, very good proactive play from SKT and Clid specifically. It's just pushing G2 to the brink. Now, there is one small advantage, is the fact that the inhibitor turrets this time are still standing. But the question is for how long? Fake is going to steal himself. That ultimate, the killer instinct, and now the towers. Look, the towers are being pressured in all three lanes. Yeah, the cannon has to respect the Vitamin to some extent. Here's the TP coming through. They're going for an all-in. All right, they are indeed. Caps are one. They're going to try to run him down. Flash is available for Caps in a few seconds. It's not up yet. Slide and the glide. There's the Emperor's Divide as well, but at what cost? Bottom tower uh, for the inhibitors down. The inhibitor will be secured as well. SK Telecom considering pushing in, but this is a 5v4. Once the recalls come in, Wonder actually teleports for this one. Use the Hemo Plague in the top lane, and Nexus turret falls. Teddy's Chain of Corruption is on cooldown. Wonder's going to continue chasing. Here comes Yankos. Cataclysm available to him. It just feels a bit desperate for G2. SK Telecom push to the brink of safety and pull it back with even more. G2 do what they can to just buy more time. And they realize, you know what? We're not going to be able to defend the inhibitor for long enough. We have to make a play. And the easiest place to do that is onto Khan, where one of the teleports is. Uh, they invested so many ultis into it that I don't even know if they could have gone for that trade. And meanwhile, Caps is just losing his life in the air. Yeah, the Void Rush was good. The Reply Flash, though. Now Caps throws down the passive. This will get the teleport out of Faker. And Perks will arrive in time. So very, very, you know, Blue Suede Shoes steps there from Caps to stay alive. Pretty significant that he actually blows Faker's yeah. teleport. It was a 2-0 to zero teleport advantage. Now only Khan has his up. Sun turret allowed him to walk away and saunter away. But the flash being down means no future aggressive plays from Caps. Kind of predictable given there's no Zonias to go for those Azir sex plays. And remember the SKT, they don't need to look to try and end the game right now. Their next objective will be this Baron. They've secured the bot inhibitor, so now they'll just keep maintaining pressure in both mid and top and zoning vision away. Do exactly what they did before to secure that objective, and then they can look to end the game. And of course, please don't take what I'm about to say as disingenuous. This is SKT's game to lose. They're in a fantastic position, but we have hit three or four items for all of G2 Esports. Hourglass now for Wanda, Void Star for Caps, Hurricane for Perks. The problem is they're staring down a 13,000 gold deficit, no Nexus turret in the bottom lane, and Super Minions. So they have to win multiple back-to-back -back flawless team fights to claw this lead. But our early game analysis for G2 fans was if it was 5v5 fights and the clock reached read, read 30 or more, then they should feel confident. Okay, tempered, yes, yeah. an asterisk, but there is still a future where G2 fight their way out of a very awkward position. Well, let's see if they can do it because there's no room for error. One minute 20 for Mountain, one minute 50 for Baron, and I feel like SKT have used the pressure of objectives just so well. It, it, as you mentioned, Papa Smithy, it's like clinical or textbook play, and you see the vision already set up in the top half of the map. Khan ushering in the supers in the bottom lane. He's got TP available to him. So SKT have got a lot of options to work with. I think SKT are playing some very uh, clean and methodical League of Legends. I think that this is the best showcase of this textbook play style. And typically, we would praise G2 for being the team that would uh, rip a page out of the textbook and do something crazy. When you're trying to set something up, they would go for the play. Oh, they're actually going on to Teddy right now. They are indeed. Flash is available. Teddy has used it. That's Mickey's ultimate. Slicing Maelstrom, though, has done so much work. Yankos and Caps are obliterated. The page was ripped out the textbook, and it said, oh, gosh, Dawn, this could be the game. Wonder's going to get jumped on by the Void Rush. 
And he throws down the Chemo Plate onto two, stays alive just a couple seconds longer. Perks is the next target, he flashes over the wall. Khan's gonna try chase, but he's got no flash available to him. Wanda still stays alive. The Transfusion and the Chemo Plate kept him alive so long. Protobel goes forward. Tides of Blood is doing work, needs another Transfusion. Hourglass buys some time. That prevents the stun, that prevents the death. Now Perks will get shut down by Clint, and Wanda steps forward. Look to Nexus! Nexus. Sumata. Sanguine Pool is thrown down, but the Nexus is being focused. SK Telecom lead the series two to one. And that's one way to do it, guys. Tactical inting, stand forward, be a tasty virus. <laughs> oh, so tasty. <laughs>